ESOS. Do you qualify and what do you need to do about it if you do? I'm Wendy Buckley and I'm Practice Director at Carbon Footprint and I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes just rolling through ESOS. There seems to be lots of really long webinars and things about so we're going to make this really short and simple and cut it down to a few minutes for you. So first of all, do you qualify? In essence, what you're testing here is if you're a large entity or not. So if we'll go for the definition of that, you'll need to have at least 250 employees or a combination of 50 million euros turnover together with a book value of more than 43 million. This seems to be the bit where lots of people are, uh, are getting confused. So you need to test that, do that with your finance director. And if either the 250 fits or this combination between the turnover and the book value, then you will qualify and you will need to comply. There is a qualification date, which is the 31st of December this year. So you need to know that your company has that size and shape at that time. OK, you won't need to do anything like register with the Environment Agency right now. Lots of people again phoning in asking about that. No, you don't need to do that. The date to have in mind is the 5th of December 2015. And that's when you need to have everything done and dusted. So moving on to what you actually need to do, again here what we're going to focus on is what you don't need to do. Um, there seems to be a lot of excitement, probably with all the energy surveyors out there, just multiplying through your number of ty sites times uh, x thousands of pounds to come up with a number. Well, actually that's overstating things quite a bit. The scope here is key for you, so you need to work out what exemptions you have in your business. It may be some sites are below the 90% of your energy use that you need to report on. It might be there are some ownership issues if you lease sites, if you have offshore sites, if you have temporary sites. So there are quite a few exemptions there that you need to look at, and we can help you with that. Will you need to have a lead assessor to help you? Yes, but they don't need to do everything. It may be that you can do a lot of the energy surveying work yourself. You may in fact have some existing surveys that qualify. So the whole of this scoping exercise is about trying to see what you really need to do. Where are those gaps? So hopefully the lead assessor has uh, a fairly minimal role to do for you and you can maybe do quite a lot of the stuff yourself. Of course, you might want to seek independent advice on your sites and that's all well and good and that's your decision. So to go back to the date, you'll need to have this all done and to uh, declare your compliance with the Environment Agency on the 5th of December 2015. Um, the data period you need to use does need to include the qualification date and that's that 31st of December 2014 date I mentioned earlier. So for instance, if you're doing your uh, data collection period between the 1st of January and the end of December, for instance, for your annual carbon footprint, that would be the ideal data period for you to do your ESOS. So that all fits together really nicely. And in fact, you could save time and money by doing those two back to back. So uh, that would probably be my recommendation if you are engaged in that kind of activity. So really, those are the basics on ESOS. Um, it is an individual situation for each business. So um, what I suggest that you do is call our team here and we would be delighted to roll through any of the aspects of ESOS with you regarding your qualification and your needs to comply with uh, this new exciting regulation.